Okay, welcome to video number three. This is on windowing and aggregating. So windowing by time and aggregating values in those time windows with, with various functions. If you recall, this is the query that we built with the query builder without the windowing by time and aggregation. So that's what we're going to finish in this video here. The function that was used by the UI out of convenience is this aggregate window function, which is actually an abstraction from a couple more primitive components. And I think it's really worth it to understand those components first. So we're going to start with the window function, which is a little lower level. So we'll inject that right now. And I'm going to not use variables yet. So we're going to, oops, I'm going to group by a minute. So before I run this query, Let's notice what we've got here. I'm in the raw data view. Here's the table view. I'm in the raw data view so that we can see these timestamps more easily. Right now I'm looking at I'm looking at a timestamp that's got 44 minutes and then 59 minutes, right? 18 seconds. So um, the, the duration between these two timestamps is 15 minutes, right? So each of these tables denoted by these numbers, right? or in this case, by these keys, are 15 minute time windows. And that covers the entire time range of the query. If I run this, so this query, this, this result set here is this query. With the window function submitted, I've broken up the tables. I've, I've actually retained my series keys and then broken up those series into windows of time of one minute each. So the start and stop values here should be about a minute apart. This is almost a minute apart, and this is one caveat. The, the first window, the oldest window in the time range, is going to start on the raw data point. And it's going to round to the top. But as soon as I come to the second minute, in this case, the one minute, as soon as I come to that second minute, it will be round the entire time throughout. So just know that. But this is roughly a minute. And then the difference between this value and this value is one minute, right? If we come to the 2249, we got 2250, and so on, right? For 15 minutes. So that's us changing the partitioning of time, basically, um, in our result set. So I'm going to show you something real quick. We're going to come out of the raw data view here, and We've now diverged from group and table keys being synonymous with series keys. While grouping by one minute didn't actually change the series keys themselves, it did change the table keys. The keys listed here may look the same, except there are now more of them because they're now each broken up. The original ones are now broken up into 15 different windows of one minute. The UI represents this by highlighting all the tables that share a series key with the one you've selected. So I've selected this one with this field, measurement, host, and name. And if I scroll down, I find another one highlighted with the same values, right? These are the same series, but um, in a different window of time. So they're actually defined, they're, they're distinguished by that one minute time range. If I move over to a line graph, I'm looking at these one minute time ranges. If I were to remove this, come back to this. I'm no, they're no longer broken up. One last concept I want to talk about with regard to window is the difference between every and period, the two, those two arguments that window takes. Um, they take, it takes more than that, but those are the two we'll talk about. So you can find the definitions for what those arguments are here. You can also find it in the uh, actual documentation, which tends to be more comprehensive. Uh, if you can, though, I mean, this is in the same UI, so it's nice and convenient. Um, every and period, they are very similar, but are slightly different. So every is the time between windows. The period is the duration of the window. So what happens when you do something like plug in every one minute, um, you're actually, what you're doing is you're, you're setting a default value of, uh, for period of the same thing. So they always match unless you, unless you explicitly say otherwise. So just to give you an example, every one minute and period one minute are the same query. When the every interval and the period interval match, 
that's the functional equivalent if you're familiar with stream processing and stuff like that uh, as a tumbling window so every window is directly adjacent to one another by time in this case you process one minute's worth of data and then the next minute's worth of data and the next minute's worth of data and there's no overlap but what if i wanted to maybe capture some data points that arrive late for instance um, that's that's what happens in streaming technology but there are reasons to do it in batch tasks like flux as well where i want to run i want to run the query every five minutes but capture the last 10 minutes right or in, maybe in this case i want to run it every two minutes and capture or excuse me i want to run it every one minute and capture the last two minutes that's a hopping window and that's what you see up here so now we can apply some aggregation to these windows let's go back to our tumbling window and go back to the table view and when we run this i'll run it we again have all our tables that are split up by a minute they're grouped by a minute and they're all raw values in here raw, there, no there's been no aggregation so within each minute there you have each record that's contained within each minute in each table so all we need to do is apply some kind of aggregation in this case i'll just choose mean let's go over here and look at mean it only takes one argument which is a column it defaults to the value column so It'll default to this, and that's generally what you'll want, right? I mean, you can specify, you can explicitly state you want a different column, but um, you don't need to if you if this is the one you want to aggregate, and that's what you'll want to do most of the time. So if we just apply that, we should get one record back, which we did. So what it did is it just averaged out the values for each table. So remember, each function is receiving an input of a stream of tables and is no different with mean it's getting an input a stream of tables that it is applying its function to iteratively so it's meaning the values of all of the rows or records in each of the tables so, so you get this you should get the same number of tables back in your stream um, and you should get one record per so this may be all you want out of your query but it's not what the query the original query was remember the ui gave us this function called aggregate window and ultimately aggregate window is a function that groups by time and then applies a function an aggregate function that you feed it so that looks pretty similar to what we have here right so what happens if we try replacing what we've done with this function so let's just inject this and i injected it in a weird spot but We'll get rid of those the window and the mean um, we will apply the same window period that we wanted before and then there's your there's your mean let's go ahead and see what happens so why was that different why did that give us what looks to be fewer tables as well as more records per table well the reason for that is aggregate window does actually some more things um, than just window and applying a function so what we might want to do is take a look at the function definition of aggregate window so it's applying window to the stream of tables it's applying the function so we did that part but then it's also duplicating the tables essentially and, and adding a column and it's using the stop column by default it's saying what it wants to name that column so it's duplicating the stop column and turning it into a time column and then it's windowing again on a on a every period of infinite which means it's not windowing at all so it's basically windowing and then unwindowing the reason for it for this is it's more of a convenience thing so the duplicate is happening because when you apply a mean in our case mean to windows it doesn't there, it doesn't know what timestamp to give it so what happens is you actually lose your time column if you don't want to lose your time column then you need to duplicate pass through the time column somehow and the default way to do that is with the stop value you could do it with the start value if you wanted to but you'd have to explicitly say that so it's doing a few things and then, and then the the second window it's unwindowing by time so what's happening here is it's going back to our original table keys our original these are now our series keys once again and it is no longer windowing by time so each of these tables has the full 15 minute 
window, the full 15 minute time range of the query in it. So we could just recreate this using the primitives that we know, right? So every one minute and we'll do a mean and we can run duplicate. We'll do as time, right? That we're hard coding in the values that are that um, aggregate window does by default. And we'll use the column stop and then we will window every infinite again. And I believe there's one more thing we gotta do. Time column is time destination, okay. Let's see what we get there. Same query, right? So that's how you can recreate that. Um, probably don't wanna do that in general, so Instead, we'll just apply this and check out our graph. And there you go. There's the query we started with. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos.